Today we are going to talk about adopter design pattern. First we are going to look at the real world example to see how adopter design pattern is used in real world. Let's suppose you have a plug and a socket and the plug is not compatible with the socket. You still want to use a, this plug with the socket. Then what are your different options? One option is to use an adopter. An adopter is compatible with the plug and the socket. Hence it makes it easy for use a plug and a socket which were previously incompatible. Let's look at a software development example. Let's suppose you have an interface called iShip and there is a method display in this interface. While you were building an application, you committed to the interface iShip. Now you realize that you have to create another concrete class called rectangle. When you created a concrete class rectangle, you found out that there is already a legacy component that has the functionality that you want to use. But the legacy component has incompatible interface. Your iShape display method takes two coordinates, whereas your legacy component display method takes one coordinate width and height. You will still be able to use your legacy component by using your concrete class as an adapter. You create an instance of a legacy component into your concrete class and then define a conversion between the interface. And once you have defined the conversion, then you can call a method on your legacy component. Adapter design pattern helps you use the components which are incompatible in the interfaces. For example, your original interface that you're using in the clients are two coordinates, whereas your legacy component has an interface which takes one coordinate width and height. But using rectangle class as an adopter, you can define a conversion and still be able to use your legacy component. Adopter design pattern is frequently used to decouple your application from third-party components. For example, if you want to implement logging, then the choice that you have is you can use Log4Net, you can use NLog, you can use Microsoft Logging Application Block, or you can build your own custom logging. Log4Net, NLog, and Microsoft Logging Application Block, all three may offer different interfaces. In order for you to isolate your application from any specific type of logging that you're using, the best way is to use an adopter design pattern. Let's see how we can do that. It is very common for application to use the logging components directly into their application. When you do so, you tightly couple your application with the third-party components. It is recommended to use logging as an abstraction so that your main application is loosely coupled with the third-party components. Today we are going to see how we can use logging using adopter design pattern. We will start with defining an interface called iLog. In this interface, we'll just start with three main methods that are commonly used for logging. The first method takes a message and the log level. Log level is an enum type. Second method takes a message, exception, and log level. And the third method just takes an exception and log level. The log level is defined as an enum type and it has following values, debug, error, fatal, info, off, trace, and warnings. For now, I have defined these log levels to match with and log. Under the hood, we will still be using and log when we will create the concrete classes. Let's start with the concrete class called and log. I call this concrete class as custom and log. It implements the interface i log. The concrete class is just acting as a pass through for and log. So there is not too much over there, but it still encapsulates the details about the third party components that we are using over here. I have an interface defined for data access layer called iSalary. It has a method called getEmployeeSalary. It takes in a parameter called EmployeeID and retrieves the employee's annual salary information. There is a concrete class that implements this interface called Salary. There is a constructor defined on this concrete class. This concrete class takes iLog as an input parameter. 
and initializes the local variable. It also initializes the dictionary. Dictionary acts as a in-memory database. For now, I have just added one value. Get employee salary retrieves the value of the salary from this in-memory dictionary. The business rule dictates that if the sal salary of an employee exceeds 4,000, we have to add it to a log as a warning. The next line of code adds it to the log as a warning and then returns the salary information. I have another concrete class called text calculator. Text calculator takes two dependencies in its constructor. One is the data access layer, which it will use to retrieve employee salary information. And the other one is the log information. It uses both this information to initialize its local variable. The default constructor has been marked as private and so that the instance of the class text calculator could not be created without supplying the appropriate dependencies. When a client calls the method called calculate employee text, it uses the data access layer to retrieve the value. And if the salary value is greater than 400,000, then it uses the log to log, log the value. As you could see, the two dependencies, they both have been marked as loosely coupled because they both are being passed to the object through the, its constructor. I have defined the configuration file for both logfunet as well as for nlog. I have enabled both two types of loggers in it. One is for the console logging and one is for the file logging in both the loggers and the minimum level is the info. In the main program, first I create an instance of a Unity container. Then I register I salary to a concrete class salary. For now, I'm going to use a custom N log. So I have mapped I log to custom N log. When Unity tries to resolve text calculator, it realizes that it does not have any default constructor. There is only one constructor which takes two dependencies. It goes into the registry and finds out that I salary is mapped to salary and I log is mapped to custom log. It creates an instance of these two classes so that it can create an instance of text calculator. It creates an instance of a text calculator and returns it. The main program calls the method calculate employee text with the ID one. Since there is only one item in the dictionary which have a salary of more than 400,000, so that means the log will be triggered. Let's run the application and look at the output. In the app config, I have changed the color of the text for end log to be blue. As you could see, there are two log entries, one from the data access layer and the other one is from the business logic component. Let's look at the log in the file. Again, there are two entries, one from the data access layer and one from the business logic component. Let's change the log. This time we are going to map I log to log for net. Let's see what the behavior is. Let's run it once again. For log for net, I have kept the text color to be white. Let's look at the data in the text file. These two entries are from log for net. One is from the data access layer and other one is from the business logic component. And log has a method called dot log, which takes log level as a parameter in all the over three loaded methods. Let's see how log for net is implemented. Log for net does not offer such method and hence there is incompatibility between the interface. When we started implementing log for net, what we did was we translated log levels and we used another method which is offered by log for net, which is if the log level is debug, we call log.debug and so on. This is a perfect example of an adopter design pattern in which, in which the two interface methods don't match with each other, but we were still able to use log for net. Summary, adopter design pattern is used to loosely couple third-party components with your application. Example, logging, caching, etc. Adopter design pattern is also used to make incompatible interfaces to work together. Thank you so much for attending this course.